everyone. Minasama, konnichiwa. I am Dr. Emily Murase, Executive Director of the San Francisco Japan Tao Task Force. I have the privilege of giving welcoming remarks for today's Peace Plaza Renovation Project groundbreaking ceremony. The Japan Town Task Force has been working for over 20 years to preserve and promote San Francisco Japan Town, one of three remaining in the nation. On behalf of today's organizers, I, uh, including the San Francisco Rec and Parks Department, I'd like to begin our program with a land acknowledgement. We all are here today. We acknowledge that we occupy the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramatush Ohlone peoples, the original inhabitants of the San Francisco Peninsula. We honor the Ramatush Ohlone peoples for their enduring commitment to Mother Earth. As the indigenous protectors of this land and in accordance with their traditions, the Ramatush Ohlone have never ceded, lost, nor forgotten their responsibilities as the caretakers of this place, as well as for all peoples who reside in their traditional territory. As stewards of this land, we recognize our duty to honor the Ohlone through thoughtful and informed preservation and interpretation of ancestral lands. As uninvited guests, we affirm their sovereign rights as first peoples and wish to pay our respects to the ancestors, elders, and relatives of the Ramatush community. Thank you. By a show of hands, how many of you have attended a festival vigil performance here in the Peace Plaza? As recently as last weekend, we have the co-chairs of the Cherry Blossom Festival here. Show them some love, Yuki and Matt. Since its opening in March of 1968, an astonishing 56 years ago, the Peace Plaza has been home to thousands of community events. However, the creation of the Peace Plaza is actually part of a very painful history among Japanese Americans in San Francisco. Many of you are familiar with the unjust and uh, forced removal of Japanese Americans during World War II. Well, there was a second forced removal in the 1960s and 1970s as part of the city's redevelopment plan for the Western Edition. Hundreds of Japantown homes and businesses were bulldozed to make way for this plaza and the malls, despite community resistance. And yet, we have come to love this place. When then JTF Executive Director Bob Hamaguchi and John Osaki hatched a plan to revitalize the Peace Plaza, it was deemed a pipe dream of a project which had only the slimmest chance of success. However, with support from the Japantown Foundation, the community organized and worked hard to secure $25 million in public funding approved in 2020 by the voters of San Francisco. The Rec and Park Department partnered with the newly created Japantown Task Force to convene community meetings to inform a Peace Plaza vision plan, which was finalized in 2019. How many of you participated in one of these community meetings? I know a bunch of you did. Since that time, the Rec and Park design team has been working closely with the Peace Plaza Committee and the broader community on a culturally responsive consensus design. And there are boards here, as well as uh, renderings in the visitor center on the second floor of the East Mall. To mark the beginning of what will be a nearly $33 million two-year transformation of the Peace Plaza, we've invited the following speakers. U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Emerita Nancy Pelosi for her unwavering support of this community. <laughs> Consul General of Japan, Yo Osumi, who brings goodwill from Japan. Uh, we're expecting any minute Mayor London Breed, a Japantown champion who grew up not far from here. Assembly Member Phil Ting, who secured critical gap funding for the program. Rec and Parks Department General Manager Phil Ginsburg, who acknowledges the work of his, who will acknowledge the work of the dedicated design team, and Peace Plaza Committee Co-Chair Rich Hashimoto, a true native of Japantown. <laughs> Following the remarks, we'll have a groundbreaking ceremony and a group photo. Uh, and again, we invite people to take a look at the designs. They are also available on the visitor center on the second floor of that building. Before we begin, a few additional uh, people we need to acknowledge. 
Uh, I want to acknowledge the late JTF Executive Director Bob Hamaguchi who pushed for this project as early as 2015. Uh, his son Scott Hamaguchi, a JTF board member, and uh, his daughter Christy Hyatt is here with, his, with her family. And please hold your applause till I get through this list. Uh, Longtime JTF board president Sandy Mori and my predecessor Steve Nakajo for their leadership. Peace Plaza Committee co-chairs John Osaki and Rich Hachimoto. Unfortunately, John had to be called out of town. Current JTF President Glynis Nakahara. Uh, current Japantown Foundation President Alan Okamoto. Give us a wave. And we're also joined by a number of elected officials today. Uh, District 5 Supervisor Dean Preston up here in the front row. Uh, Supervisor of District 8, Raphael Mandelman in the front row as well. Uh, assessor Recorder Joaquin Torres has joined us. Uh, and our Japantown superhero, Sheriff Paul Miyamoto. Uh, we also have Police Chief Bill Scott and Fire Chief Janine Nicholson with us, among other uh, very important department heads. We're happy to welcome Rec and Park Commission Vice President Joe Hallisey, Commissioner Kerry Wintrub, who are here with us. And today's event would not have been possible without the work of Peace Plaza Renovation Project Manager Marion Koss. I saw Marion walking around. Rec and Park Deputy Director for Policy, Beverly Ng. Where's Beverly? Uh, Susie Kagami, our event producer. Sound Innovations, and the JTF and Rec and Park staff. Let's give all these folks a round of applause. We're also joined by many city department heads. If you're representing a city agency, please stand to be recognized. Michael Lambert from the library, and Greg Colfax from the health department. And we also have many Japantown community leaders, including from the Task Force and the Japantown Foundation. If you are representing a Japantown serving organization, please stand to be recognized. Please stand, don't be shy, come on, don't be Japanese, please stand. So let's begin with our favorite member of Congress, our very own, the intrepid and extraordinary House Speaker Emerita, Nancy Pelosi. Thank you very much, Emily, for your leadership as well. Honors granted to all who are mentioned, and all of you who are here, but let us salute Emily Morasse for her leadership as well. Thank you to co-chairs Hashimoto and Osaki for, you know, I'm on my own now. <laughs> Uh, these are just more acknowledgments. It's an honor to be here with Assemblyman Bill Ting and join him in supporting this initiative and with the mayor, when, as will be joining us, and Phil Ginsburg, thank you for your leadership. And it's very wonderful to be here with the Consul General of Japan, Osamu Yo. I'm, per I'm just so honored to be with him. Let me just take a moment to tell you some reasons why. When I was, uh, uh, 2008, I was in Japan as a representative of the U.S. government and for a speakers, speakers of NATO conference. And they asked me to be the first high-ranking American to place a wreath at the Peace Memorial at, in Hiroshima. It was a big honor and had not been done before. I had to get all kinds of clearances and the rest. But it was a big honor and it led the way, they tell me, to then President Obama doing the same thing a few years later. It was really quite a, a, a threshold that we crossed. And I then received the Grand Condon of the Rising Sun from the Emperor of Japan for my uh, services there. Says she immodestly, but just to make the connection here. But I consider it a connection to each and every one of you. When I came back from the trip, as usual, coming back from a trip, I would gather the people from the community to hear, tell them, report to them, and hear their views. And I learned then that there were many, many people over a hundred years ago who came from Hiroshima to San Francisco. So we take great pride and pride in all of that. So just another reason uh, to be proud of and take responsibility for this peace for this peace plaza. I was proud to be a member of Congress who voted for the reparations and, and uh, resulting from the internment of Japanese um, during that terrible, terrible time. So
So again, to Rich Hashimoto and John Osaki, and again the ha uh, Baba Hamaguchi's family was here, Christy and her brother. But I just want to also say that it is a special, special honor and to be with Sandy Mori. We're all so grateful to Sandy Mori for connecting so many of us to the beauty of the city's Japanese community for such a long time. Thank you, thank you, Sandy Mori. This plaza is the beating heart of Japantown, yet has experienced some, shall we say, lack of attention over time. But with this groundbreaking, we finally begin to bring to the future attracting visitors, supporting business, and sharing Japanese history, culture, and heritage. And that was why I was proud. The last time we were together here was within the past year where we celebrating securing $3 million in federal community project funding to support this important project. And why was I able to get that? Because of the support the people of San Francisco showed for this project, right to our supervisors, uh, for this project. So I could say it had strong local support. And again, uh, it was nice to be here for that last year. But now, uh, I think, I think um, it's my honor to return to Japantown which is a beloved treasure to us, not just for our city, but for the country. It's the oldest Japan town in the country, certainly maybe in the world. San Francisco takes great pride in being the first port of entry for Japanese immigrants coming to America, and I represent mentioned some of those from Hiroshima over 100 years ago. And today we're thrilled to be the home, again, of the oldest Japan town in America, infusing our city with rich culture and leadership. Indeed, it was always saying, come to San Francisco, the beauty is in the mix. And what a thrill it is to be here shortly after the Northern California Cherry Blossom Festival, which always brings such vitality and beauty to the city. There's some cherry blossoms right over there. We still have, we still have some. And so thank you for all, to all the leaders, and the, so many of them are here, uh, to celebrate this momentous day and to make this rebuilding of the Peace Plaza possible. How thrilling that it would imagine Plaza will continue to stand as an indispensable, indispensable landmark for our city for decades to come. And now it is my privilege to introduce Consul General of Japan, Osamu Yo. I recently was with him, and many of us were, who are here now as of leadership in our city, for the birthday of the Emperor of Japan. You heard the banging of the drums? Well, they were banging food, right? It was a bang, bang, banging food. It was delicious. <laughs> As weren't the drummers wonderful, Taiko? Uh, yeah. where, where are they? They were wonderful. They were wonderful. Thank you, Consul General, for your leadership in depending uh, in making the ties between America and Japan all the more vibrant. Thank you, Consul General. The Consul General of Japan. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker Emerita Pelosi. And thanks, Japan Town Task Force and San Francisco Recreation and Park Department for inviting me today. I always am wondering if I, in, in San Francisco, I really need to wear a necktie. But this today, I wear pink, better than that Sakura just disappearing. And I feel like after Nancy Pelosi's uh, very beautiful speech and very beautiful dress, I feel that uh, among the contingent, I may be the second best to be dressed. <laughs> <laughs> so as Council General of Japan, uh, I would like to state very clearly today that Japan-US relationship is stronger than ever. That is what I believe uh, Speaker Emerita Pelosi witnessed when Prime Minister Kishida's recent visit to Washington, D.C. But on the foundation of that strong relationship is owed immensely to the contribution of the Japanese-American community in this country. Japan Town, as uh, Emily said as well, San Francisco is one of the three remaining Japan towns in the United States. At the time of EPEC, the Lots of leaders come, and our foreign minister, Kamikawa, she uh, came to Japantown. 
has a motorcade cruise down Gary Boulevard on the way to JCCCNC to meet with the community the leaders. Foreign Minister Kamikawa paid homage to the Peace Plaza and this pagoda because it's a, this is a very place at the heart of San Francisco, Japan, and the re resilient story of the Japanese Americans. So she was here, passing there, uh, as with her. In, and my, and this is why I'm thoroughly pleased to see that the renovation of the Peace Plaza is finally starting. And my enormous gratitude, gratitude goes to the federal, state, and city governments for their support. And I suppose Peace Plaza was named with fervent wish for peace after World War II. And I know the landmark pagoda was a gift to San Francisco by Osaka City in 1968. Next to Peace Plaza is Buchanan Street or Osaka Way, which features a beautiful origami fountains by a Japanese American Ruth Asao. So San Francisco and Osaka began their relationship in 1957 and many successful student exchanges and college events have taken place since then. That being said, I believe more could be done. There should also be further cooperation in business, innovation, and across the board. The time is ripe. The upcoming Osaka Kansai Expo in 2025 is a golden opportunity that lies ahead of us. I hope you'll seize this unique opportunity to grow this historic relationship beyond its current situation. So for the last few weeks, my calendar was full of cherry blossom related events. They were the events with brightness and vibrancy and that are full of hope. Japan's town's prime time is ahead of us. I hope a successful successful renovation of Peace Plaza will bring new blossoms to Japan town, the Japanese American community, and the diversity of this city. On that note, I'd like to hand this mic over to Mayor London Breed, who I know have deep affection for Japan town and its strongest supporter. Mayor Breed. Thank you, Council General, and it's great to be here with all of you in Japantown. And I have, as the Council General said, great affinity for Japantown because as a kid, I didn't live too far from here and spent a lot of my days as a youth playing and walking through the various businesses as well as playing arcade games and becoming an expert in Miss Pac-Man at the Japantown Bowl. Sandy Mori and I were talking about that yesterday and how much we miss Japantown Bowl and the excitement, but we have so many incredible businesses, restaurants, and activities still happening here. Some of you have been here for the last two weekends to celebrate the Cherry Blossom Festival and Parade, and boy, it looks like we need more space because people were so packed tight, you could hardly walk down the street. But this is a really special neighborhood 365 days of the year because people come here from all over, whether they're visiting San Francisco or they're just stopping by their neighborhood grocery store, picking up a plant or shopping for anything that they might need. And one of my favorites, I know you don't want to hear this, some of the businesses, Richard, but Benihana, I just love Benihana. So, to be here today is really special because this is many, many years in the making. In fact, I remember when I first became supervisor of this district and I talked to people like Richard Hashimoto and Bob Hamaguchi and Sandy Mori and so many who said, we need to fix the plaza. And I said, if you remember Sandy, didn't Ed Lee just redo the plaza? The red plaza was redone. But the problem is when it was redone, they didn't take into account the infrastructure. And so below, there's a lot of leaks and challenges with the garage, and there were some infrastructure things that should have been taken into account when the work was done in the first place. 
So I set into motion a desire to push and aggressively do all that I can to get this project to be prioritized. I wasn't able to prioritize it with the millions of dollars that we have now as supervisor, but those millions of dollars added up and then when I first became mayor, we put it in our health and recovery bond. And thanks to the voters of San Francisco for approving it because as a result, the $25 million that will support this $34 million project is because of each and every one of you. So thank you all so much for your support. And let me tell you, we are so blessed and lucky to have a fearless leader like Nancy Pelosi. She delivers time and time again, not just for the project that we're celebrating today, but for projects all over San Francisco. There are countless projects that she and I attend together because of that additional resources that helps to put projects like this over the top. And we are so grateful for her love and advocacy for San Francisco. Assemblymember Phil Ting. He has done so much specifically for Japan down, Japantown, but he too, as the budget chair in the state of California, continues to make sure that there are resources provided to San Francisco, and we are so incredibly grateful for your support. And I want to give a special shout out to the Rec and Park Department. I know some of our commissioners are here, and Phil Ginsburg is here. But the people who take care of this plaza so that folks can enjoy it include the incredible staff of Rec and Park. So when those leaks happen, they're the ones plugging the holes. And now we're going to have a permanent fix because of all of these resources. It does take a village. And this Japantown community is a special village. So many of the people here have been advocating for many of the things that you see for decades, even before I was born, including people like we've already said, Sandy Mori, Kara Ito, uh, uh, um, Richard Hashimoto, Steve Nakajo, and of course, as what was mentioned before, Bob Hamaguchi. He was a very special person and did so much to support this community. He was a tireless advocate, and I'm so grateful that his family has joined us here today to honor and celebrate the work he did to help make this possible for the people of Japantown. So thank you all so much for joining us here today to celebrate a new opportunity for Japantown Peace Plaza. And with it, that, it is my honor to welcome Assemblymember Phil Ting. Thank you so much, Madam Mayor, and thank you again for your uh, leadership, your stewardship of this uh, community. Uh, I like you, I have very fond memories of the Japantown Bowl. Uh, it was very sad when unfortunately we uh, had to close that down, but spent many an evening uh, bowling there as well as uh, many a night playing basketball over at the JCCNC. Uh, so this community is also very special and very personal to me. Uh, as an Asian American, we've always felt that San Francisco is the heart of Asian America here in this country. So many movements, so many issues, so many ideas start and come from San Francisco. And no community represents that better than Japantown. The Japantown, to me, is very much like the city of San Francisco. As you all know, the city of San Francisco, the flag and our flag is a phoenix because we rose above the ashes after our great earthquake and came back stronger and better. And I think of exactly what Emily Morase said about Japantown having to go through the internment, having to go through World War I, uh, that decimated this community was such a huge hit on this community, but it rose again. Also rose when it had a chance, it was challenged by redevelopment, and it rose again. And to me, uh, this community is so special to me because uh, I grew up around mostly immigrant Chinese. So as someone who was growing up as an Asian American, I didn't really have many mentors or elders who were like me, who grew up here who spoke English as their native language, who really grow up, grew up in American 
culture. So when uh, Speaker Pelosi talks about, and Mayor Bree talks about, you know, Sandy Mori and Carolito and Steve Nakajo and Jeff Mori and, you know, Rich Hashimoto and the whole J-Town crew here, uh, these are many of my mentors as I got more and more active in San Francisco. So this is a very special place, and this is not just a special place for me, but so many other Asian Americans, young people, and I think we need to make sure that we are preserving that culture, that vibrancy, that community for so many generations to come. This is a special place, and as you know, in San Francisco, our neighborhoods are what make this an incredible city. Each of our neighborhoods are distinct, unique, the cultures, and they each require a lot of love and care and really preservation. Um, along with the $6 million that the state gave to help with the Japantown Peace Plaza, I was really honored. I was uh, there with Supervisor Preston when we announced the $5 million for Buchanan Plaza across the street. Uh, I am dying to be there when we turn back on that Ruth Asawa fountain and get that water going, right? I mean, I see, I see Sandy nodding. Uh, we have to do that soon, and I really, uh, I just can't wait, because I think that is so special. In fact, I didn't even know, you know, I've walked by that fountain for so many years, I didn't even know that was a Ruth Asawa fountain. And the fact that it's not running is absolutely a crime, so I can't wait to get that water turned back on. And for us, yes, you can, you can applaud for that. Uh, but again, you know, Japantown's a village, our city is a village, and we are so, you know, lucky to have not only, you know, was Speaker Pelosi saving our country from disaster, she had enough, she had enough time to also save Japantown. And it's just incredible, because when I talk to, you know, my colleagues, uh, some of them see their members of Congress, some of them don't. I think they're in amazement when, when I tell them how often I see Speaker Pelosi, because she's like, you know, traveling the country, you know, saving the world in D.C. I mean, maybe there's three or four of her. She, she, maybe she's cloned. But when I, when I say how often I see her here, you know, she's in D.C., you know, running our country, and we saw when there was a void of leadership in D.C., how critical her role was, but she always has enough time to take care of our city and our community. So please, Speaker Pelosi. You know, we have our great council general, our very special relationship with the country of Japan. Uh, that is something that's very precious. You know, this uh, Peace Plaza started as a, a gift from the relationship with our sister city with Osaka, just like we have the Japanese Tea Garden, and really to have uh, the country make those two incredible permanent contributions to our city. So thank you, Council General Izumi. Really appreciate that. You know, and again, to our, to our mayor, our city, um, you know, really is about our city family. We talk about our city family and how hard we all work and how hard um, we work to maintain uh, this incredible place that we all home, call home. And I can't think of, frankly, a harder working department head than who's coming up next, which is our general manager, uh, Phil Ginsburg, the much better looking Phil on stage today. Um, but Phil Ginsburg has uh, single-handedly transformed this department. And I think, uh, I think about what I talked to, you know, my, my budget staff when we were in Sacramento about making a difference. And I said, the only barometer we have as a budget committee is if, you know, if we can change the lives of 40 million people. That's the only barometer. And I know that Phil Ginsburg single-handedly taken the department uh, of Reckon Park and thought about how do 800,000 San Franciscans, plus the millions of tourists, and the millions of people who come here, how do they experience our parks? Because the parks don't matter unless people are in them. The parks don't matter unless people are playing and recreating in them. And the parks don't matter unless this is part of our civic space. So please give it up for our great general manager, Phil Dinkman. There are time, the times that I um, have the pleasure of, of being on this dais with Assemblymember Ting, it all depends on who speaks first uh, when, when we refer to the other as the better looking Phil. Um, I, I guess I got the prize today. Uh, 
Assembly Member Ting, I do want to take a moment to say thank you. Uh, he has been a bit of our, he's been our secret weapon. It's nice uh, to have uh, someone who's the budget chair in Sacramento also be a dad who's in every park and every weekend. He has uh, supported this park system at the state level uh, incredibly well every corner and uh, we thank you and we're going to miss you. We're going to miss you. Uh, you know, here at the dais, uh, I'm quite inspired and, and quite honored because Speaker Pelosi, uh, they said it best, you're saving the world and you're saving the city and you're also saving our parks from India Basin to the Presidio, from Japantown to Buchanan Mall. Uh, your support and your advocacy has uh, contributed immensely to creating the best park system in America. Thank you. And our mayor, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, not only have uh, you made sure that parks have been looked after in our budgets, including this year, right, Madam Mayor? And, uh, uh, but, and in our bonds, but um, the most dangerous thing for a department head uh, is to learn that the mayor loved, that your mayor loves to walk through parks completely anonymously all day long, uh, which he did during the pandemic never told me where she was going, never had a chance to uh, tell my staff, hey, uh, you know, the mayor's gonna be there, uh, but I think we held up. Madam Mayor, thank you for being a champion for our city's kids and our open spaces. It's so appreciated. Uh, and to our incredibly well-dressed Consul General, um, yes, you are wearing a tie, and yes, you are extremely handsome today, but I, in my phone, have a picture of the Consul Hour Consul General at the Japanese Tea Garden yesterday celebrating our newly refurbished pagoda with no tie. Uh, we heard some very inspiring speakers uh, today, and the Taiko drummers, man, I, uh, I have to confess, I, uh, I pulled a muscle just listening to them. Uh, all of this sport, uh, uh, all, all of the ceremony today is just the tip of the iceberg among the vast support and goodwill uh, from the Japantown community that, uh, Emily, that you spoke about so eloquently earlier. So to the co-chairs of the Japantown Task Force Peace Plaza Committee, Rich Hashimoto and John Asaki, who couldn't be with us today, thank you for your steadfast leadership over these last 10 years. Uh, Speaker Pelosi and I were chatting before and she said it's all going to happen very quickly after we break ground. And the truth of the matter is the construction is the actually kind of sort of the easy part. And it's the 10 years of planning and community engagement and discussion that leads to a moment like this that is really the hard part. And so Rich, what I want to say to you, you, you know, you and John and the entire community, Emily, you too, you have been absolutely appropriately fierce advocates for the community but your tenacity has been so graceful and so collaborative and came with such good spirit that it has been inspiring for me and for our staff uh, and we have ended up with the best possible project because of it, so thank you. As, uh, as other speakers have noted, this Japantown is a treasure for our city and our nation. It is the oldest Jam Japantown in the nation today and it's just one of, of three left. Uh, we have a responsibility to steward it. Uh, uh, we have a responsibility to respect the history here and to make sure that our children understand uh, the history here. Um, this is not just an open space park renovation project. This is really about upholding the legacy of an important and historic community. And it's about ensuring that people of Japanese descent and the greater Asian American and Pacific Islander communities have places to gather, to celebrate, to main cult maintain culture, and to maintain identity. And none of this would be possible without the hardworking staff of uh, our department and in the city, so forgive me for a few really important acknowledgements. Uh, Rec and Parks Capital and Planning Division lead Stacy Bradley. She oversees the whole team that renovates our project. Stacy, where are you? Thank you so much, Stacy. Uh, Emily called her out, but I, uh, she deserves another, uh, another shout out. Marion Koss, our steadfast and dedicated project manager. After we build it, as the mayor noted, and 
Others have noted we have to take care of it. Our Park Service Area Manager, Allison McCarthy, and her team, they love this place so much. We are guided by an outstanding commission, and I want to thank our commissioners, uh, two of whom are representing us today, Rep uh, Vice President Joe Hallisey and our newest commissioner, Carrie Wintraub. Thank you very much to both of you. Uh, and we don't do these projects in a silo, and uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, all of my department head colleagues. This is, uh, for those of you, uh, you all need to know, we have a great mayor and we have a great bunch of department heads that work so hard every day. Um, but I want to give a special shout out to Carla Short and her team, uh, Jennifer Cooper, Edward Chin, J.A. Ham, Raymond Louie, uh, to SFMTA Rob Malone, uh, who's helped us a great deal with this project, to the Planning Department, DBI, the Arts Commission. Uh, so many hands uh, are involved in a project like this. Uh, to our contractor, Plant Construction, uh, in partnership with our uh, Public Works Construction Management Team, uh, Laura Tanagawa, who's here, I saw many consultants, uh, RHAA, uh, I think Nathan Lozier's here, a AECOM, uh, Masahiro uh, In Inua, uh, Biggs Cardoso and McGinnis Chen Associates. This totally takes a village. So uh, now's the time we start this project. So it is my pleasure to bring up Rich Hashimoto, who's going to uh, help us break ground. Okay. Thank you so much for all the kind words. I don't know about you, but it's pretty cold in the shade here, so I'll just make this a little fast. Um, gives me the esteemed honor and great privilege to announce the groundbreaking shovelers. Now, I'm looking around, I don't see any shovels, but I see these hoes, the Japanese hoes, the hand hoes, so I don't know what you call them in Japanese. I, I looked it up on, and Phil and I were looking it up on, on our uh, Google search and comes up with Konki and you came up with something different. So we're just going to say Japanese hand ho. So uh, as I call your name, please step up, grab your ho, and, uh, <laughs> and and uh, make your way to the, the dirt. Thank you. Uh, Speaker Emrata Nancy Pelosi, thank you for all your support from nation's capital that sealed the crucial gap. Uh, for the renovation. Then we have um, California State Assembly member Phil Ting. Thank you, Phil, for all your support helping produce the gap and your support for the Osaka Way and, of course, Kim Mong Gakuen. And, of course, our beloved mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for your support with Proposition A that got us the bulk of the funding needed to get the project started. Consul General. Yo Osumi, please. Will you enjoy this Cherry Blossom Festival? Yeah, all right. And then we have Recreation Park Department General Manager Phil Ginsburg. This has been a long and frustrating journey, but we're finally there, man. Right on. Now we have, let's see, Christy Hyatt. Is Christy available? Uh, this is Bob Hamaguchi's uh, daughter that first, uh, hi Christy. So not nine years ago, uh, Bob got funding from Japantown Task Force, uh, excuse me, Japantown Foundation, which paid for the first feasibility study to make this all possible. Christie's joined with her uh, husband, Darren, her two children, Camden and Mason, and her brother, Scott. Uh, they're in the audience today. Dr. Emily Murase, director of Japantown Task Force, who worked tirelessly tirelessly with the Japan Town uh, and preserving to establish the reimagined re Japan Town framework. But last but not least is yours truly. Unfortunately, John couldn't be here today, so I'm taking his place with the groundbreaking. Thank you. Um, listen, uh, Beverly, are you here? Beverly, do you want to count, do the countdown? Oh. You want, oh, okay. <laughs> you want to do the countdown to me? <laughs> okay, are we ready? Everybody join us. Five, four, three, two,
We're going to do a group photo and we're going to invite some folks up as well. We can have our Reckon Park commissioners come up. Sandy Mori, Steve Nicajo, Fire Chief Nicholson, Police Chief Bill Scott, Sheriff Mayumoto, Glynis from JTF, Marion Cost, our project manager. And any of our wonderful other VIPs, please come on up. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for coming out. Please enjoy the mall and the rest of festivities day.